I don't talk a lot about fibromyalgia on this channel. I don't talk about how I've lived with it most of my adult life and how it can be incredibly debilitating at times whenever I experience a flare-up. And for me, a flare-up usually begins with about a week of not being able to sleep properly. I become more fatigued, the muscles become more susceptible to stress. They weaken, and the weaker they become, the more tight and rigid they become, and to the point where my whole body is on fire on the inside, and I'm freezing cold on the outside, and, and everything hurts, and my head is just, it feels like if it would just explode, that would give me some sort of relief. I don't normally take a lot of pharmaceutical medication. In fact, I probably only take maybe eight or 10 Tylenol in the course of an entire year. For me, alternative ways to manage the stress, to try to get a good night's sleep, to eat an anti-inflammatory diet that when I am in flare-up helps to mitigate excess inflammation in the body, excess pain. Those things help rolling on the balls, using the wooden dowel, Stretching is essential, which is why for me it's a combination usually of yoga and stretching. Daily physical activity to burn off excess energy so that when it is time to go to sleep, I'm sufficiently fatigued enough to sleep, knowing when to rest throughout the day, because rest and sleep are two different things. My adult life has been a constant battle of pain, trying to mitigate the effects the debilitating effects that fibromyalgia can have, not just on my body, but my relationships, my overall quality of life. I think because I've lived with it for so long, I'm used to having flare-ups. I, I, I know what to do. I know how to shut it down and just crawl under the covers and lay still. But usually that doesn't come until I've dressed, I have addressed the, the extreme tightness and the utter fatigue of the muscles. When I'm in flare-up, if you touch my skin even ever so lightly, it's extremely painful, which is why when I get to that point, I know that the best thing that I can do for myself is just be still and, and rest, even if I'm not able to fully sleep. I mean, sleep would be of great benefit, but I can't force myself to sleep. I never have been able to force myself to sleep. And I guess the one thing that living with fibromyalgia for most of my adult life, if not my entire adult life, has taught me is that there are some things that you can control and then there's some things you just have to accept. I have to accept when the body goes into flare-up, but I can control everything that I put into my mouth that contributes to inflammation and pain. I can control the amount of rest that I get, that I give my body in the course of a day. I can't always control my sleep. I can't always control, you know, what time I go to sleep or how well I sleep. Because even in that, I can go and lay down at 9 o'clock at night but still not fall asleep till 2 or 3 in the morning. There's just some things I do not have the control over. And I've learned to surrender those things and let go. Because what I discovered is that the more you try to have control, the more exasperated the symptoms become. I have a couple of friends that have suffered debilitating fibromyalgia similar to what I experience. And while the other people can have compassion for you, it's like everything in life. People can have compassion for you, but your experience is yours. You go through the experience alone, and it doesn't matter how much you talk about it. It doesn't matter how much other people understand what it is that you're going through. You still have to go through it. And a lot of times we go through it alone.